We're going to be learning about the horse's digestive system in this video series. Learning more about this topic will help us understand the unique needs of the horse's digestive system and how we can better meet them with the feeds and feeding strategies that we choose. Now, some of you may have heard the following phrases when you've learned about the horse's digestive system in the past. That the horse's digestive system is an accident waiting to happen, or that it's a very poorly designed system. Keep these statements in mind as we journey through the digestive system. We will revisit them after we reach the end to see whether you agree with them or not. We begin our journey at the front of the horse's digestive system. Gail Ecker, our director at Equine Guelph and honorary Vanna White for the day, has brought along a horse skull and is holding it up against our equine star, Jack. Peeking out from behind the skull, you can see Jack's lips, and if you look close enough, his whiskers. Horses have special long muzzle whiskers that help them sense where blades of grass or haystalks are and allow the horse to efficiently and selectively use their strong lips to gather and bite off plant material with their front teeth, known as their incisors. Their tongue will carry the feed back to their back teeth that help them grind the food. These teeth are known as molars. Have you ever watched a horse chew and focused on the motion of the jaws? It's different from how we chew, which is very up, down, up, down. Horses chew outside to inside on the slant, kind of like a grinding motion. This chewing motion, combined with the fact that horses' teeth continue to erupt throughout their lifetime, can result in irregular wear patterns. Regular dental checkups are important for the horse to prevent dental issues such as irregular teeth wear and abscesses. Chew time is actually also very important for horse welfare as it satisfies the horse's innate need to chew. Horses that do not chew their food properly or enough times can have an increased risk of choke. It's also very important to note that horses only produce saliva when they chew. This is different than humans who can produce saliva at even the thought of food. Think of something sour right now and see what happens. Saliva is very important for horses for two reasons. One, to help lubricate food to move through the digestive tract, and two, because it is alkaline and provides a buffering effect against stomach acid. The amount of times that a horse chews depends on what they are eating. Horses generally chew more, and so produce more saliva, when eating forage compared to concentrate feeds like grains. To give you an idea of the difference, one study found that horses eating a hay diet chewed around 43,000 times per day compared to around just 10,000 times per day when horses were eating a pelleted diet. This is just one reason that providing a forage-based diet for your horse is so important. Now, we move on to the next part of the digestive system, where the food moves down into the esophagus. As you can see, Jack is modeling the esophagus and stomach with help from Gale. The esophagus is the long pink tube that you see. It's indeed very long at about four to five feet and it lays on the left side of center down the neck. Normally, the horse eats in head down feeding position, so the esophagus really has to work to get the food to travel up to reach the stomach. The muscles in the esophagus contract in a wave format to help push the food through the digestive system. This is known as peristalsis. Peristalsis also moves food along the rest of the digestive tract right out to the end. The food must be well chewed and mixed with lots of lubricating saliva to make it up to the stomach against gravity. One of the most common problems with the esophagus is choke, where the food becomes lodged. This is most likely when horses bolt, bolt their feed without chewing, leaving little time for saliva to be produced and mixed in. Remember that we've said chew time and saliva production are very important for horses. Next, we take a look at the horse's stomach, which is also being modeled by Jack with help from Gail. The horse's stomach sits up high under the ribs, mostly on the left of the midline. The esophagus inserts into the stomach at an angle. The position here means that horses cannot vomit so what we feed them needs to be clean and safe. The horse has a relatively small stomach for their size. Their stomach capacity is only about 9% of their total digestive system. 
Our stomach, on the other hand, is about 17% of our digestive tract. The horse's relatively small stomach is likely due to their evolution as a grazing creature. Horses will spend 16 to 18 hours of each day foraging if allowed the opportunity. This is one reason that it is very important to feed your horse small amounts of feed frequently as it keeps small amounts of food moving through their stomach. We often refer to this as trickle feeding. A horse's stomach is a little bit different than a human's stomach. A horse's stomach has two main parts. The bottom part of the stomach is known as the glandular region. This region is where stomach acid is produced and stored. It contains a thick mucus layer that protects the stomach from any damage from the acid. The upper area of the horse's stomach is known as the squamous region. No acid is produced in this area. It's important to note that this area is also a vulnerable part of the horse's stomach. It contains no mucus lining to protect it from any acid that splashes up from the lower glandular area. The band that divides the two areas is known as the margo placatus. The glandular area of a horse's stomach is constantly producing acid. This has important implications for how we feed and manage our horses. When horses are meal fed and the stomach is allowed to become empty, Acid from the lower glandular area can splash up and create ulcers in the upper squamous region. This is why forage is so important for horses. Forage enters the stomach and forms a protective mat over the surface of the stomach acid. This helps to prevent the stomach acid from splashing up and creating ulcers in the squamous region. You may hear this protective layer of forage being referred to as a forage or fiber mat in the literature. Gail's now giving us a close-up through a special window to let us see into the horse stomach. You'll notice the two regions, the upper region with no mucus protective layer and the lower acid producing region that does have that protective layer. You might also notice some gross looking bugs in there. Can you guess what they are? If you guessed bot fly larvae, then you're right. These smart larvae know to avoid the acid in the lower region and so hang out in the upper region of the horse's stomach. The stomach contains enzymes that will start to break down the food. There are some microbes that may help with the digestion, but the enzymes usually do most of the work. And now we're on to the small intestine. The small intestine is by far the longest part of the bowels and is about 69 feet long. This might be why Gail is having some trouble trying to get it sorted on Jack. It is a narrow coiled tube that is made up of three sections. The first section is called the duodenum and provides an entry point for bile from the liver and digestive enzymes from the pancreas. Another unique trait of the horse's digestive system is that they do not have a gallbladder. Humans have a gallbladder that will store the bile produced by the liver and release it into the digestive tract in response to eating. Since the horse has no gallbladder, they have no way to store the bile, and so it is constantly secreted into the digestive tract. This is yet another reason that horses need small amounts of forage frequently. The duodenum, which is by far the longest part of the small intestine, comes next. This is followed by the final part the short ileum that empties into the next part of the digestive tract. The small intestine is the main site where nutrients like protein, soluble carbohydrates, and fats are further digested and absorbed. Vitamins and minerals will also be absorbed here. Villi and microvilli are little finger-like projections that line the small intestine, providing a massive surface that is in contact with the feeds and fluid. Transit is relatively fast through the small intestine section and the feed will soon move on to the part where it will spend the longest part of its journey and this is the large intestine. We've now covered the horse's foregut. Stay tuned for part two of this video series as we learn about what makes the horse even more unique, their incredible hindgut.